Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to the Open World Forum. And uh, today we are uh, hosting uh, Microsoft, who is a major uh, sponsor for the Open World Forum. And uh, we have uh, Frederick Atz, who is Strategic Interoperability uh, Division Marketing and Operation. We have Craig Kitterman, who is Senior Technical Product Manager on Windows Azure. And we have Alfonso Castro, who is direct Director of Strategic Partnership uh, open, source, open Solution uh, at Microsoft. So um, first, I'm going to ask a question uh, to Frederick. Uh, Microsoft, in an open world uh, forum, uh, it's not completely new, but uh, for most of the people who know Microsoft, it's, it, it's fairly uh, unusual. So what are, what are you doing here? Uh, what I'm doing here is, is uh, in France, I'm responsible for the strategy around interop and open source. And I mentioned strategy, so it's been a, a long-term effort, as you mentioned. It's, it, it, we started it uh, pretty much 10 years ago. And, 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 and we are really proactive in terms of engaging there. Uh, we have kind of, we break it down into kind of three pillars. Uh, one is really hearing back from our customers, listening to their needs in terms of interop and, and engaging with the open source. With you know uh, six, 600, 600, uh, 630 uh, million of, of Windows uh, uh, 7 sold, with 75% of the server running Windows Server, we need to hear and we absolutely listen to the customers in terms of getting feedback and hearing what they need in terms of interop and, 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 uh, and engaging with them. Uh, and when I say engaging, it's been a long work with standards uh, and, and, and also pr probably more recently engaging with the open source communities, making sure that the right uh, applications are available on our platform. And the, and the third pillar uh, in terms of the, or the first bet or the first engagement that we do have is open in the cloud. So that's where we are absolutely uh, nailing down uh, all the applications in the cloud. And that's where Craig is. Okay, well, speaking of the cloud, Craig, you are the best person to have here today. Uh, so uh, Microsoft is in the cloud. It's called Azure. So can you explain us what is uh, your, what are you doing here with Azure? Sure. Well, first, uh, Windows Azure, for those who don't know, is a, it's an application platform um, that is really a general purpose open uh, application platform that allows developers to run any type of application, anything they want, really. Um, and when we look at Windows Azure and we think about what it means to be open in the cloud, which is an important uh, you know, key element of our strategy, we look at a number of different parts, and, and it starts with developer choice. We really want to give developers the ability to take the language, the frameworks, the runtimes that they're comfortable and familiar and happy with, that they've been working with for many years, and bring those and run those on Windows Azure. That's an important aspect. Um, more importantly, or, or equally as important, is making sure that all of our all of our services that are exposed through APIs are exposed in such a way that they can be consumed by any service or any programming language or any operating system or other system for that matter. And that means using standards-based interfaces like HTTP and RESTful APIs um, so that anyone can take advantage of those services. Um, and when we look at the virtualization layer, we want to make sure, again, that we, we support Virtual machine portability. If you bring a virtual machine running an application to our platform, uh, you need to be able to take that virtual machine back out, run it on premises if you'd like, run it with a third party cloud provider. Those are all options that are given to you. Um, data portability is very important. If you put data into the cloud, you need to be able to get that data back out in a, in a format that's useful for you. In the way that you put it in, you need to be able to get it back out. So it's not locked in. These are all different aspects. And most recently, we've announced some new capabilities in our platform offering infrastructure as a service capabilities. Um, and we've even introduced the ability to run Linux uh, applications and workloads uh, in Windows Azure. So um, that's, we're really excited about that. And it's just all part of a continuum that we're, we're on to continually be more open in the cloud. And we're going to continue to listen to our customers and try to understand what other steps we need to take to make sure that we can really live up to that promise. OK, so Frederick is uh, focused on interoperability. You in the cloud, you offer the ability to be interoperable. And now, with Alfonso, you are reaching uh, the partners. 
Yes, actually what we do at the Open Solutions Groups is that we work with um, open source companies for us, both of uh, us and, and them, um, to, um, to partner in providing um, interoperable solutions to the market, uh, to our customers. So more specifically, we've been working with SUSE for uh, now six years, and I will, I will continue for a, a few years uh, from now um, in providing those uh, interoperable solutions um, that started uh, around the virtual virtualization world. Uh, it was SUSE at that time on top of uh, Hyper-V with Windows Server. And uh, we developed several, um, several other technologies on top of that success, uh, mainly around systems management. We do integrate both SUSE's technology, which is called SUSE Manager, with Microsoft's one, which is System Center. And we recently announced, that was uh, two weeks ago, um, a new driver for a um, SQL server that um, may, may run on SUSE. So from a SUSE-based application, you can access a uh, SQL server uh, database. Okay, so now uh, I'm a, a, a user. Um, what, what is, what is the, the goal you're, you're trying to reach? Uh, as a user, you know, you are uh, using different kind of software, maybe from Microsoft, maybe from other uh, uh, editors, vendors. So the, the big issue you're trying to reach uh, with uh, Microsoft Azure is to bring them all together and to allow them to run on the same platform. Is it correct? I, th I think that's a fair assessment. I mean, w we understand that mixed environments are reality. So nobody has just a Microsoft environment or just an open source Linux environment. All of these things are mixed together and it, it makes good business sense for us uh, and it makes good business sense for our customers to ensure that these things work together. We can't, we can't make our customers have to do all the, the work to make these things work together. It's our responsibility as a vendor to make sure they work together. So we accept the reality that it's a mixed environment. Uh, we need to meet the goals of our customers and, and therefore by making our products more open, more interoperable, um, it's good business for us, it's good business for them. And the good thing if you take that both on the public cloud as well. Craig was mentioning, and on the private cloud, is that we want to provide the customers with both choice and consistency. Choice in the fact that uh, they can uh, go for either Linux or Windows server in that case, um, both of them being virtualized by Hyper-V in our case, and both of them being managed by System Center. And those two elements will provide the consistency the, uh, the customers want to have on top of choice. Because having choice is one thing, but the, the thing you want after that is for you to perfectly control your IT environment, again, w whether it's on-premises, on, on your private cl cloud approach, or in the cloud, uh, in the public cloud with, uh, with, with Azure. Yeah, I'm putting myself at the, uh, as a consumer. Uh, place. Uh, the big issue with the consumer is to uh, to be in, in an environment which is a kind of homogeneous and not having disruption between one kind of an environment and another kind of an environment. So you are, uh, all of three of you are trying uh, regarding interoperability and bringing uh, uh, partners together. Uh, that's what you're trying to do. Yes, it, but it needs to be homogeneous from a user point of view, it, but it needs to be nowadays heterogeneous in terms of uh, technology and in terms of platform. And that's what you do. Yes, exactly. That's what we, what is all about. Yeah, you're, you're trying to uh, uh, understand the differences between the platforms and trying to reduce these differences, if we, which is interoperability. Absolutely, and, and where it makes absolutely fully sense, as Craig mentioned, is to provide the seamless experience. Like you, you, you find your own environment uh, in 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 many places. And the other par part that that uh, Alfonso was mentioning is is it's also about mixed environment. So make sure that whenever the customers are having mixed environment, they have the best experience in terms of integration of both both worlds. And that that's where we, what we are announcing today as part of of Open World Forum, which is. Uh, with our partner with Suzy, uh, we are even bring it to the next level, which is in France, bring, bringing a, a joint platform that we offer to customers to make sure that they are able to evaluate those and 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 see what they can do in mixed environment. Okay, so, uh, so for 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 you you three, uh, what is your bring today? Uh, what is the major point for uh, the Open World Forum for your presence in Open World Forum, in in, in one one two words? 
Well, I would start in saying that we've been partnering with the Open World Forum officially for the last two years and uh, efficiently in the past four years. Uh, we've been here uh, for a few years now. So it's continuing to show the open source world that we are engaged, that we are committed to uh, working with the open source uh, uh, ecosystem as a whole. Uh, again, if you look back uh, five, six years ago, it was only on Linux. Now, just on Windows Azure, but we could talk about some other of our products, but just on Windows Azure, as Craig mentioned, there are lots of open source technologies. So it's a continuous commitment, and um, we will be continuing working on, the, on those technologies. Craig, do you have anything to add? Um, I'll just add a little bit. I mean, we, as Alfonso mentioned, it's not just about uh, making the platform open and interoperable. We're actually contributing a great deal to open source uh, in, rec in the recent era as well. A lot of the libraries that are used from Windows Azure, a lot of the developer tools and, and libraries are all available on GitHub. They're open source. We accept contributions. We're trying to make proactive, uh, active contributions um, that actually help developers get work done. Um, we're contributing to some of the actual open source projects that the run the application runtimes like Node.js. We're an active contributor there. So, um, so we are you know continuing to evolve our own platform, but at the same time working very hard to make sure that open source developers have a great experience on Windows Azure as well. Yeah. Frederick, last word. Uh, last word. It, it, it's probably a feedback from the keynote this morning. It, it's not an, an or. Uh, it, it's both world. It's mixed world. So we we are engaged in terms of providing the best experience in, in a mixed world now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good open forum.